welcome to my youtube channel modi mechanical engineering tutorials so in my previous lecture i already explaining about the determination of the shear angle 5 for the cutting of the materials now in this video i would like to making a relationship for different kind of forces it will be acting onto the chips so just you can see the force relationship in details so let us start so just you can see the geometry so according to my previous theory this one is our workpiece material and tool is being fed against the workpiece material so that will be the tool is being fed so according to that tip of the tool and our chips is being formed so that will be making a shear plane and that will be make a angle with the axis of the acting of the feed by the tool so that will be making an angle 5 shear angle 5 and this is act as a rack face of the tool so basically rack face of the tool with the vertical axis it will be making an angle and that will be as a rack angle so rack angle alpha so by the application of the tool is feeding towards this side our chip is flowing only onto the in contact with the rack face of the cutting tool so that will be making a chips so that will be called to be a chips is being flowing onto the rack face of the tool now for ma making a force relationship so let us start with the geometry so from the figure shows that the force is acting onto that particular chips by the cutting tool so just you can see over here this fs or you can say shear force which acts along the shear plane so as we already discussing in my previous theory this a to b that will be the shear plane and the force acting onto that shear plane fs so fs which acts along the shear plane and is the resistance to shear of the metal in forming the chips so just you can see so this is our shear force or you can say fs so according to that F to N or you can say normal to shear so that will be F N so that normal force towards the shear so according to this figure that normal force onto that shear force it will be at the right angle so here that will be the normal force and according to that cutting force in this directions so like this so that will be FC or you can say cutting force so in between it will be the resultant force R and at that it will be making a thrust force so in that directions just you can see it will be the shear angle 5 so at 5 angles it will be a cutting force FC from the geometry so that will be making us some of the relations now we will see this F force or you can say F is the frictional resistance of the tool acting downward against the motion of the chips as it moves upward along with the tool face so force N it will be look like this acting onto the chips that will be normal to the cutting face of the tool so according to this kind of relationship so that will be frictional force F it will be acting and according to that frictional force that will be the normal to that frictions so at right angles so that will be capital and normal to the frictional force 
and according to that it will be having a resultant force r dash so basically these r and these r dash it will be into opposite sides so force fs or can say shear force and normal to shear force may be replaced by their resultant r and so force f and normal both their resultants r dash so this resultant force r and r dash are equal into magnitude and opposite directions and collinear so that will be the basic requirements of deriving the force relationships so therefore what purpose of the analysis of the chips is regarded as a independent body held in a mechanical equilibrium by the action of the two equal and opposite force just you can see from r and r dash so that will be the important part of the making of force relationships so always that will be r and r dash it will be equal and into opposite direction is required so after deriving a relationship of r and r dash now we will start with the derivations or can say relationships of the different forces for the metal cutting operations so let us start with the help of dynamometer of two orthogonal components of the resultant r this one and can be measured so the horizontal component is the cutting force fc just you can see f c that will be the horizontal components and the vertical components is ft so that will be ft or you can say thrust force so basically this cutting force fc and ft that will be measured with the help of dynamometer so that dynamometer it will be fixed with the single point cutting tool so that two terms fc and ft or you can say cutting force and thrust force it will be measured by the dynamo meter so that can be right as a f that will be equal to fc into sin alpha and ft into cos alpha because at this it will be making an alpha angle so f is equal to fc sin alpha plus ft cos alpha now for that not fc cos alpha minus of ft sin alpha because it will be into this directions for shear force this one fc cos phi because that will be making an angle shear angle at shear plane phi so fs that will be equal to fc cos phi minus ft sin phi and normal to shear so this one is a fn normal to shear so fc sin phi plus ft cos phi now we will discussing with the coefficient of friction can be given as mu is equal to f upon n so just you can see put the value of f from here equation number 1 so f is equal f is equal to fc sin alpha plus ft cos alpha divided by fc cos alpha minus ft sin alpha so finally friction angle beta that will be equal to 10 inverse of mu so on shear so f is equal to fc cos phi minus ft sin phi fn equal to fc sin phi plus ft cos phi now for the resultant force so the resultant force r is equal to under root of f square plus n square so that will be equal to 
under root of f s square plus f n square or you can say that it will be equal to f c square plus f t square now according to that force relationship we are also interested to making a sum of the velocity relationship so let us see for making a velocity relationship for metal cutting operations so there are basic three types of velocity involved in any of metal cutting operations so first one capital v that will be equal to cutting velocity the velocity of the tool relative to the workpiece materials so v is generally related to the workpiece velocity now second one v s so s is stands for the shear velocity so v s is equal to shear velocity so basically the shear velocity of the chips which is relative to the workpiece so the velocity of the workpiece that will be related with the velocity of the chips which will be flowing onto the rack face of the tool materials and third one we see the chip velocity the velocity of the chips of the face of the tool so that will be called to be a chip velocity v c so now we will make the relationship just you can see so starting with the first one v that will be the cutting velocity the velocity of the tool relative to the workpiece so in that case workpiece is stationary and tool is moving so velocity in this directions so according to its value it will be the v and according to its shear place angle because of the chip is generally flowing at a shear plane and that will be making an angle it will be called a shear plane angle so basically at shear plane angle 5 that will be the shear velocity because the velocity of the chips relative to the workpiece so that will be our v s so just you can join and according to its rack angle alpha in between these two and making a one perpendicular line which will be making an right angles so if this is our shear angle 5 at right angle so this one is a 90 minus 5 and here that will be the alpha so that is the angle and it will be our 90 minus 5 minus alpha so finally you will get this angle it will be phi minus alpha and that would be our v c because that would be the chip velocity velocity of the chip of the face of the tool so this one is the velocity triangles so from this velocity triangles just you can see v s this one so v s divided by sin 90 minus alpha that will be equal to v upon sin 90 minus 5 minus alpha so this one is our v s shear velocity and divided by sin 90 minus alpha so just simplify you sin 90 minus alpha that will be cos alpha equal to v upon sin 90 minus phi minus alpha that will be the cos phi minus alpha so finally you will get vs upon v equal to cos alpha divided by cos phi minus alpha